Hi folks. As an instructor, one of the least favorite things that I ever have to deal with is coming across a outline or paper that has been plagiarized. It's frustrating because at my college, like many colleges, when a student turns in plagiarized work, it starts an entire process of reporting and disciplinary action, the consequences of which can range from failing an assignment all the way up to being expelled from the college. Fortunately, there's a tool that I use in my courses known as Turnitin, which can be a really handy way to make sure that the work that you submit isn't plagiarized and isn't going to cause some of those problems. So in this short tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of submitting a speech outline to Turnitin and then taking a look at the originality report so that you can get an idea if you are looking okay or if there are problems that you need to address. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so I am in a Canvas shell and I'm just logged in as a test student, but this should be pretty close to the view that you get when you log in as a student. I've gone ahead and gone into the assignment section and pulled up the next speech that is upcoming and I've pulled up the outline submission assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and click into there. We're going to assume for the sake of this example that you're already at the point where you're ready to submit a speech outline but you would always want to take a look at the specific directions that talk a lot about how to uh, submit the assignment. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and click Start Assignment and submit our outline. So in Canvas, there's a bunch of different ways to submit assignments that you can't turn off, including Studio, Google Drive, and Office 365. Please don't use those. You just want to go ahead and upload a file. So I'm going to click the Choose File option all right, and here you can see I've got a template that has been modified to be submitted, and it's on the topic of Rick Astley. I'm going to go ahead and submit that, and as you'll see in a second, I have mocked up an outline that's pretty likely to set off a bunch of the plagiarism warnings. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and agree to the end user agreement and click Submit. Then I get the confetti and trophies to let me know that I've submitted my assignment. The next step is to look at the originality report. And I'll warn you, when you submit a document like this, it takes a little bit of time before that originality report goes through. So I think I'm going to go ahead and set a 10 minute timer, go grab a cup of coffee. And when we come back, we should have a originality report to look at. So stand by, I'll speed things up. All right, folks, it's been a little over five minutes, and at this point, the Turnitin process should be complete at running its report, and we can go ahead and look to see what we came up with. So what you want to do is navigate back to the location where you submitted your document. In this instance, I've just stayed here on the submission page for the person of interest speech outline submission. And you can see over here on the right hand side, there's a box that says submission and it says submitted has the date and time that I submitted it. And below that, there is two links. There's one that says submission details and another one that lets you download your submission. For this, we want to go ahead and click on submission details. This brings us to the submission detail page and you can already see by looking at my document here that there's likely going to be a problem. Next to the document title there is this 91% bubble next to it and this is the similarity score. So you can see that it's already rating it as a failure but let's click into it to kind of see why that's the case. All right, first time using it, just go ahead and accept the license agreement. And you can close out of this if this pops up. All right, so what this is going to do is bring you into the Turnitin Feedback Studio. This is helpful for a couple of things. It's got tools like grammar checking, but the most important thing that we're here for is our similarity score. So if you scroll through this document, you will already be able to notice that there are a variety of problems. Specifically, there are a bunch of areas that are being highlighted by Turnitin, and this lets you know that there are issues here. For the sake of making a sense of everything. I'm going to go ahead and turn the grammar checker off today 
just so that we can specifically look at similarity. But these tools can be uh, can be helpful for checking out grammar as well. So now as we scroll through it, you can see that the vast majority of text in this outline is highlighted by Turnitin and his little corresponding numbers. What this is telling me as the grader and you as the submitter is that a lot of this work is not original. So if you click over here on the far right hand side where you see the match overview, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the locations where information has been copied and pasted. And so you can see over on the right, a bunch of information was copied from Wikipedia. And then there's the famous people source, the Henry Stick fandom page, a paper that was submitted to the another college and a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other places and the color on these match overviews align with the highlighting over here on the right hand uh, right hand side so what we're kind of seeing here is an example of what's often referred to as patchwork plagiarism meaning the submitter of this document has gone to a bunch of different sources and copied and pasted this is probably the most common type Type of plagiarism that I see on speech outlines and it's avoidable by doing a couple of things first off remember on an outline your goal is to use your own original words and thoughts and to write in your own voice but also you're writing extemporaneously here so you should be summarizing ideas that you're going to go on and expand the goal is not to write a manuscript so really with the exception of the occasional quote from a source you're not really going to ever need to copy and paste anything, and that's going to go a long way towards keeping you out of uh, keeping you out of trouble. Uh, the software is also pretty smart, so even like rearranging words and moving stuff around is still going to get uh, to get caught. So it's important not to uh, not to do uh, that. Um, I do want to point out also that. Just because you have cited something doesn't mean that it's okay to directly copy and paste from that source. So if you look here, uh, first off, these are not in APA reference format here. So this is a problem. They're just URLs. But even though some of the sources on the reference page match what has been copied and pasted here, they're still being plagiarized, even though the student in this instant is telling you where you're at, where you're at, because they're not doing their original work. They're passing off the work of others as if they were, uh, as if they were their own. So in this instance, if I was to get an outline submitted that this was this bad, my college would require me to bring the student in for a meeting to discuss the assignment and to submit a referral to open an investigation with my college's uh, ethics and disciplinary committee. At that point, it depends a lot on what that uh, what that investigation finds. But as I was saying earlier, could have pretty significant consequences for the student. So ideally, what you want to do is discover if you have problems before due dates come. And so if you ever have a submission that shows a high similarity index, it's important that you quickly and ethically fix the document and put things in your own words and remove that uh, remove that plagiarism. Uh, but Turnitin can be a really helpful tool up until a due date to be able to determine if uh, if you're having problems. I will warn folks in other classes, not all professors use Turnitin like I do. I feel that Turnitin is a useful tool to help self-correct before due dates happen and only ever becomes a disciplinary tool at the point where a due date has passed and students have had a uh, opportunity to replace it. Some folks, however, do not allow students to see the similarity report, so it's useful to know in those instances that this is what your professor is seeing. And so again, it kind of varies depending on the philosophy of the individual using it. I like folks to know that they're having problems so they can fix it before due dates, but it's also speaks, it also speaks to the importance of making sure that you're doing your own work, that you're citing quotations appropriately, and when you are putting things and ideas on the page, that they're coming from your mind and not being copied and pasted for folks that have put stuff else out there. All right, well, that wraps up this quick tutorial on how to check your similarity score on Turnitin. I hope this was useful. If you have questions, feel free to drop one in the comment. Thanks, all.